Lisa with Luna Moth Creations and I am back with the box. So hello and welcome if you're new to my channel. My name is Lisa and on my channel I like to do lots of witchy things including unboxings. So and this is my sacred space crate for June 2022. Um, I love this box. So excited. Um, while I open this I'll tell you about my day. So if you guys you know don't follow along you could probably fast forward a little bit but if you do follow along or if you want to follow along go ahead and hit that subscribe button the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos we could be best friends I'm just saying I got lots of best friends I can add more could be you could be you okay <laughs> I am well okay so uh, what I was gonna talk about is how hot I am oh my god so Oh, and by the way, I'm wearing my uh, Earth, Air, Fire, Water, what does it say? Earth, Air, Fire, Water shirt. This is one of my shirts that I created. It's in my store. It's entitled My Witchy Store down below. It is Luna Moth Creations Co. as well on Etsy. Okay. Um, also, I'm trying to really get my Instagram going. I need to learn how to make reels. I've made like a couple reels and I don't remember how to do it. But anyways, I'm going to try to start doing that. I'm trying to beef up my shiz. I'm just saying... So, I'm going to digress here, like again, <laughs> so I'm hot is what I was trying to say. Um, the AC in the car that I drive, it's actually my boyfriend's like old car and since I work from home, like I, sorry I'm starting to play with some of my crystals, since I work from home, like I can't justify buying a car right now because I had given my car to my son. Anyways. Um, I took the car, did I already do that? I took the car to his shop because he's a mechanic and um, he couldn't fix it today. He was like, we're going to need to get a part. And I'm just like, oh my God. So anyways, I feel like there was more that I was going to tell you guys. Oh no, it's hot. I just want to go lay by the pool, but like, you know. Okay, so <laughs> this is the inside of the box, Sacred Space Grape. And, I, yeah, like, I feel like there was more to tell. There was, like, a point to my story. It just, you know, it fell flat. So, anyways, I'll think of it, maybe. Okay, so we always get a uh, calendar. Here's our June calendar. It looks like we're doing lots of candle. Okay, the box says Ancient Spellcasting Box. Okay, so we're, I see a lot of potions and crystals and candles on the artwork here. And if you guys aren't familiar with Sacred Space Crate, we always get a calendar. And it says the June full uh, June full moon is called the Strawberry Moon. Um, and that's because back in the day day, like um, things were, you know, you were reaping your crops and shit or something like that. Anyways, um, and then it talks about the moon, like when it goes void, when it enters what um, uh, astrological sign, first quarter, blah, 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 all the moon phases. And then on the back, it has the moon in the zodiac. And this is just generic, like, what the moon's doing if it's in the sign of cancer, blah, blah, blah. So, and then it talks about Saturn retrograde and Neptune as well. So I guess, are we doing a Neptune retrograde, y'all? I guess maybe. And then Litha, of course, is, um, it's actually uh, June 21st this year. I know it's always June 21st. Excuse me. It's it's always June 21st. It's when the um, sun is at the peak, like the highest point in the sky. And it's like the longest day of the year. And um, my son, I was my oldest child. I was due on Litha, but I had him the next day. So he's he was born the 22nd. So anyways, and that's the son that lives with me. He's Does anybody want him? He's like 20... How old is he? I think he turns he twenty he turns twenty five this year, um, and he moved back in with me because he had moved from Oklahoma to uh, back over here where we live. And um, anyways, I, I'm I'm ready to get rid of him. <laughs> He's a good kid. Like he doesn't bother me really. I just really want some space. His room I could totally use as a bigger witchy room. I'm just saying. Okay, I love my child though. Okay. All right, we're getting into the box. All right, so it says, <laughs> I have curated this box this month to cover one of the oldest forms of spell casting. Also, if there's a cute girl in her 20s um, that's, you know, chill, like my, my son smokes pot, you know, but he, does, he takes care of his business. He also likes to game, but he's super, like, handsome. And I'm not just saying that because I'm his mom. He, like, really is cute. Um, but if there's a girl in the St. Louis area, 
around that age, let me know. Let me know. Okay. All right. <laughs> I've curated this box this month to cover one of the oldest forms of spell casting, the witch's bottle. Yes. Witch's bottles are a form of white magic used only for oneself. Historically, the witch's bottle was used for protection, but not to harm the witch who has cursed you. A white witch or folk healer would prepare the witch's bottle. Historically, the witch's bottle contains the victims, the person who believe, believe they had a spell put on them, for example, <laughs> their urine. How do you get your victim's urine? Okay. Hair or nail clippings or red thread from Sprite traps. Later, witch bottles were filled with rosemary needles and pins and red wine. Historically and currently, the bottle is then buried at the farthest corner of the property beneath the house hearth or placed in an inconspicuous spot in the house. After being buried, the bottle captures evil, which is impaled on the pins and needles, drowned by the wine, and sent away by rosemary. Very nice. Sometimes seawater or earth are used instead. Other types of witch bottles may contain sand, stones, knotted threads, feathers, shells, herbs, flowers, salt, vinegar, oil, coins, or ashes. A similar magical device is the lemon and pins charm. Another variation is within the disposal of the bottle. Some witches' bottles were thrown into a fire. When they exploded, the spell was broken. The witch bottle was believed to be active as long as the bottle remained hidden and unbroken. People did go through a lot of trouble in hiding their witch bottles. Those buried underneath fireplaces have been found only after the rest of the building has been torn down or otherwise disappeared. The origins of this tradition have been dated at least to the 16th century. In ancient times, the bottles were made of stone and originally contained rusty nails, urine, thorns, hair, menstrual blood, and pieces of glass, wood, and bone. Modern day witches' bottles are also curated for reasons other than protection. We make witches' bottles to attract love, prosperity, and self-improvement and place them on our altars. I have curated this box with the intention of giving you the items which you can use in your practice of spellcrafting a witch's bottle. I feel like I just wanna like start putting together like bottles with like pee in it and all these, you know, the rusty nails and stuff like that. Maybe some coffin nails, which I have a coffin nail somewhere from one of these boxes and um, like start hiding them in people's houses. <laughs> just like go for a dinner party and like hide that shit somewhere for them to find. Like, like don't hide it too hard so they'll find it and then be like, different. And of course I would do this to people who didn't know I was a witch, which there's not that many people that I would get invited to a dinner party um, that didn't know that I was a witch, but hilarious, right? Try it, let me know. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have ever done that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got some crinkle paper. I've, I've actually dispersed the crinkle paper monster. I guess I need to start making a new one. Um, he is now in a bag in my supply closet um, for packing purposes. So, I don't know why I wanted to smell that. <laughs> okay, all right. We've started the crinkle paper monster again. And we first have some spell incense sticks. Freaking itchy. Dude. Oh, that smells good. I just, I just saw something in the box that looks really great. Um, all right, let's see. Spell incense sticks. These magical incense sticks are made with Egyptian musk. I, Smelled very musky, which will bring your desires to you and enhance your spells while burning. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. I had so many plans. I would have had this this video up earlier today. I had so many things on my to do list, and then my boyfriend was like, "Come bring the car out here so I can fix it." And then he's like, "J.K., I can't fix it right now." Ooh, chocolate chai tea. Very nice. I'm not going to open it, but um, chocolate chai tea, as chocolate is a staple in many of our post ritual, excuse me, post spell rituals, I wanted to include this delicious chocolate chai blend, chai, chai tea blend to help balance out your energy. Made with Rubio's tea, ginger, cardamom, chocolate chips, and coffee, coffee, co chocolate, chocolate flavor. 
And then it tells you about how to brew with some milk and honey and stuff. I, I almost bought honey the other day and I didn't. Okay, and then we have a black beeswax spell candle, y'all. It's kind of a, a medium size. <laughs> and it says, black beeswax candle. I wanted to add another option for sealing your witch's bottles. Ooh. You know how to do that, guys? If you don't, I'll tell you. Um, so you will light the wick and then you let some uh, wax build up in the little thing up here. Like, in, just let it pool up there. And then you pour it over your spell bottle when you're finished with it to seal it in. So, okay. Um, where'd it go? Um... Sealing your witch's bottle if you are doing a bottle for protection. A lot of witches prefer to burn a candle on the top of their spell bottle as a ritual, like where you'd stick it on top, and allow it to melt down the entire bottle. This can be done by melting the top of this candle and placing it directly on top of the cork lid. Apparently we're getting a bottle. <laughs> Light your candle and perform your magic. Please stay with your candle as it burns all the way down if you are using this method as the candle can easily tip over off the bottle. So this candle, I don't know that would be a good one to use the way that I said because, you know, it's a beeswax and it's got that like rolled situation. It would probably just go down in the crevices. So, um, but if you had like, like a candle like this one, like you can already see that I've got like, like a little divot from when it um, has burned over there. Oh, I bet that goes in that. Okay, sorry, I just realized I, was, I had found it. Let me just get it because I'll forget. You guys, I'm, I'll forget. You guys know it. Um, I had a little one of these guys um, and I was like, what did that go to? It went to my other candle holder over there. Okay. All right, but you can admire my shirt again. Hey. Okay. <laughs> Next. I'm assuming this is our um, crystal. It feels like a rough crystal in a silver metallic-y, uh, what's that called? Uh, what's the, what's the silver, tinfoil? <laughs> oh, this, this looks like zebra jasper. Can you see that? Looks very zebra-ish. Very nice. Let's see if I got that right. Rough, just kidding, just freaking kidding. Okay, I actually have this stone in large pebbles in my store. I, I just got some equipment to be able to have my camera face down instead of using my phone, because that's one of the reasons I don't do a lot of face down things, because like I feel like my phone is like blah, it doesn't do good enough. But anyways, I just got it from Amazon, the little doohickey to do it, and I'm gonna try to Put it together tonight and I possibly will be doing a video on the crystals I got for my shop while I was on vacation but speaking of the crystals I got this is a rough black opal so black opal is like a, an opaque variety of opal so there's none of that um, like fire flash in it um, but it's like swirls of like to me it's like different shades of brown Sometimes you can actually see black, but a lot of times it just looks like really dark brown. And then like, to me, like coffee creamer is in there. <laughs> so some people call it um, coffee stone or um, like coffee opal, I think, or chocolate opal. Anyways, it's beautiful. And the ones that I got are gorge. So, all right, black opal offers complete protection of one's emotional body and aura. This crystal provides one with an etheric shield against negative energy as well as another person's emotional toxicity. Black Opal will help you stay calm and relaxed in uncomfortable situations while also acting as a daily reminder that you're not alone on this journey. Simply carrying or wearing this crystal daily will help one become less anxious and have the ability to break out of their shell. So if those sound like wonderful qualities that you guys would like to embody, go to my store, it's down below, and get yourself a Black Opal. And I'm telling you, oh, it's gorgeous. Like, I need to pick out one to keep myself because it, they're so pretty. All right, I gotta take a drink. Should be drinking water. Oh, I know what I was gonna tell you guys too. 
I worked out. I'm so freaking sore. I started a new beach body program. Beach body, if you guys are not familiar, um, like P90X and um, Insanity, like Shanti um, does the Insanity and a bunch of other um, workouts. But anyways, and then what's the guy who does the P90X? I know his name. Anyways, Shay Shailene Johnson used to do ones on there. She's not with Beach Bunny anymore, but I love her workouts. Anyways, long time ago when I really committed to working out, um, it was probably like in 2012 or 13. I had just gotten <laughs> my second divorce. <laughs> so my ch oh, oh my God, we're gonna we're going down a rabbit hole. So <laughs> all my kids are from my first husband. We were like high school sweethearts, I guess if you can call us that. And we were married for like 11 and a half years together for, I don't know, 15, 14 or 15 years. Anyways, I, after I divorced him a few years later, I did get married again. And it was like, we were together probably a year and he moved out like less than a year. Like it was a train wreck. Like you should really get to know people before you marry them. <laughs> it was an oops marriage. So I don't really call it one. But anyways, um, why am I talking about that? Oh, so after I had gotten a divorce from my second husband, um, I was watching a TV and an infomercial came on about insanity. And it's the most intense, crazy cardio you would ever do ever. It's awful. <laughs> but I did it. I committed to it. Like my kids, you know, they were younger. They were like in grade school at the time. They would sit on the couch and cheer me on because I'd be like, I'm done. I can't do it. I would like on the floor crying and they would be like, come on, mom, you can do it. It was the cutest thing. I thanks guys. Um, I have good boys, but anyways, uh, that jump started my, my workout, um, career. I don't have a career in working out, but you know what I'm saying? And then after that one, I did, um, Shailene Extreme, which is kind of weightlifting plus cardio. And that's how I got introduced to Shailene Johnson. I love her. You can find her on Instagram. She's great. Um, but it introduced me to actual free weights weightlifting. And that was it. That was where my love was. Like, I love lifting weights. And again, for those of you that follow along, I had broke my foot a couple years ago and I stopped working out. Blah, 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 and then I got a tennis elbow and it was stupid. Well, anyways, I, um, my elbow seems better. It's not 100%, but I'm like, F this, I'm going to work out. So I started a program. I've got Beachbody on demand, so you can pay, I think it's like 100 bucks for a year, and you get those, like, streamed. You could put it on your, like, smart TV. You could put it on your phone. You put it on your tablet, whatever. It's like an app. And um, watch all those videos, and you get access to almost everything in there. Um, but it's really awesome. And the program that I started was called Muscle Burns Fat, and I really liked it. Yesterday was lower body. Like, my butt hurts so bad in my my uh, calves and my thighs, like it all, it's hurting. Tonight is upper body, so I'm gonna stay on this. It's, it's actually seven days a week, y'all. It's a commitment. So cheer me on. Be like, girl, how's your workout? And then I'll be like, oh crap, I better go do it, okay? All right, so enough's enough. Also, one cute thing. So I found out my middle son, I'm, I'm sorry guys, I'm telling you all about my life. My middle son, who is actually getting married in like less than two weeks. Oh my God. Um, I'm so excited. I was crying the other day picking out a song for us to dance to. Anyway, so he had told me, so he started lifting weights in, he, it may have been junior high, but really in high school, he really started lifting weights and he started doing, um, uh, what's it called? Power lifting. And he's not like a huge guy. Like he was in the lower weight class. Um, like 140s, 150s maybe. And, um, but he won some competitions in powerlifting. And he told me recently that the reason he got into weightlifting is because he used to watch me do it. Like how cute is that? Okay. All right. We're getting back to the box. So now we have a lavender salve. For those of you who aren't my best friends, I'm really sorry about all that. They, they don't ever smell like anything, but I still like to smell them. Um, well, smell a little bit like lavender. So it says lavender sap is a little miracle worker in a tin. It heals and moisturizes skin, soothes irritation, burns and burns and itching. 
and can... <laughs> Okay, I'm not even gonna go there. And can even help heal acne, scrapes, and eczema. Let's not forget how out of this world wonderful it smells. And actually, yeah, loaded with essential oils and an aroma that is scientifically proven to ease anxiety, stress, and sleepless nights. I thought that I smelled um, lavender. Usually her stuff is, um, I don't know what I wanna put this on. Oh, let me, I gotta scrape on my leg. We'll put it right there on my leg. <laughs> um. Usually they don't smell like anything, but um, that one does smell like lavender. All right, I think this is our herb. I'm sorry I'm digressing so much, guys. But those of you that follow along um, always say that you don't mind when I do that. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it. All right, so our herb is Barberry Root Bark. Never heard of it. Let me know if you guys want this in my store. So cute. And I just took new photos last night and revamped my listing for my herb jars. Um, so I actually have some in here because I did a photo shoot in here. So these are the herb jars that I sell in my shop. So these are a 20, uh, 20 milliliter, 20 milliliter, I think. Um, jar it's got the cork top and then if you guys can see I've got my apothecary label on there and so they are quite small but I do have the um, magical properties plus what their associations are so gender planet and element and those meanings I have taken from the Scott Cunningham's uh, herbal dictionary or herbal encyclopedia or whatever it's called so um, to make sure that I got I got good you know information for you guys but anyways so like that was eucalyptus we've got uh, rose petals and listen I have like over 60 different types of herbs and flowers and I also have a couple different salts like black salt pink Himalayan salt dead sea salt and then I have cauldron sand as well um, and if you don't know what cauldron sand is, so here's my baby cauldron. If you can see, yeah, I've got lots of things in there. That purple is your cauldron sand. So, and I was gonna do like a short video on this. I think, um, Dylan, didn't you ask me? So, well, I guess that's burnt, so I can't do that. So your, your uh, charcoal disc, you get little tongs, you light the bottom on fire, and you put it in there so the sand keeps it from, like, effing up the bottom of your thing, which, you know, the cauldron still gets kind of, you know, funky. But anyways, and then you can put herbs on top of your um, your little charcoal disc. Um, I will make a video of that. Maybe I'll try to do that tonight since I just got my face down thing. So, and then I'm just showing you guys the, the herbs that I got in here right now. So then we have orange peel. If it'll focus, there we go. Let's see, there's little orange peels in there. I've got some calendula. And alfalfa. These are just ones that went into my photo shoot. We've got some cat's claw. And hibiscus. And the last one that I have on my altar is blue mallow flower. These are gorgeous. These are expensive though. Um, the, it, like I have a hard time finding that herb or that flower but anyways if you guys are interested these are five dollars of a vial in my shop if you just need a refill so say you've bought my jars or you just don't really want the jars or you have your own way of storing yours I actually just put a new listing in my shop of one ounce baggies and it will have my apothecary label on it in a bigger like the labels bigger because of the um, the ziplock that I put it in um, so you'll still get all the information in my um, my baggies but they are priced out um, based off how much it costs me to get the herbs so they're not all the same price and we'll see i may change my jars to be that way too i'm not positive but right now my jars are flat five dollars for um every type of uh herb or flour or salt or whatever so anyways okay let's get back to the box 
because that's why you're here. <laughs> burp, burp, burp. Barberry root bark in glass herb jar. I chose barberry root bark for this box because of its strong ability to protect and to bring in prosperity, luck, and power, making it a versatile herb to use in your witch's spell bottles. Magical uses are protection, especially for children, curse and hex breaking, repelling bad magic, prosperity, luck, power, and healing. Very nice. I do enjoy her jars as well. They're super cute. Okay, I need another drink. All right, now we have a magical oil. I'm going to try to stay on topic, guys. It's hard. It's really hard. All right, we've got sandalwood spell oil, and it looks like there is little sandalwood chips in there. You can see them floating in there. Mmm, going to put it on, y'all. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh, it smells so good now. So good. Okay. Sandalwood ritual oil. This ritual oil is a staple in my practice as there are so many magical properties in this magical wood. Sandalwood is very protective, making it a wonderful oil to use in your protection spells. Sandalwood is also a staple used in consecrating magical tools. I added sandalwood shavings to the oil to enhance the magic of the essential oils. Very nice. One of these days I'll start doing my own essential oil blends. I've got so many plans. I need to win the lottery. I was thinking about this. If I won the lottery, I would definitely quit nursing. I'm just saying. But I would not stop working. Like, I, that's just not me. I don't know how to not hustle. Like, I've been a hustler for as long as I can remember. And I was like, man, if I won the lottery, I would, like, get all kinds of wonderful things and take more classes and um, just have the best witchy store ever which is still my plan y'all i'm still trying to have my best witchy store ever best witchy store ever all right i actually y'all i just ordered more tumbled stones for my shop it seems that um most of my customers enjoy my tumbled stones um i don't get a lot of orders for my bigger crystals although i do have some bigger crystals in there um if i start getting more bites on those i might add more stuff and I'm also going to think about doing some live sales. Let me know what you guys think. Would you attend a live sale for me? Um, you, I don't necessarily need you to buy anything, but I'd love, you know, for you guys to let me know if you'd let me test drive that. <laughs> I'd like to do it. Um, I need to work some extra shifts so I can buy a bunch of really cool things and then, like, have my first live sale. I thought something was broke, but it's not. Okay. Yay! So, we have a spell jar, and it is a glass bottle with the cork. It's just kind of a bigger version of my guy right here. And then we've got a little um, twine around it with a pentacle. And these are so cute. I actually have um, larger ones as well that I will hold my personal herbs in. Um, so that way I have like a larger amount. How cute is our spell jar? I'm keeping all this bubble wrap, y'all. You may receive this in your order. Recycle. Recycle. Okay. Okay. Witch's bottle. This bottle can be used to spellcraft your witch's bottle spell. I added a pentacle charm to represent the elements. It has a cork top that can be sealed with wax and placed on your altar or even to stick your needles in if used as a protection bottle. I'm trying to think of what I want. I think I know what I want to do with this. Okay, and last but not least, I thought this was one thing, but I just got a glimpse of what it said it was. It's totally not what I thought it was. I'm beyond effing excited. We have a sealing wax kit. OMG, it's a wood box. And it's got a little, a little doohickey here. Okay, let's open it up. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me hold this up so you guys can see. Look, it's a wax sealing kit. Okay, let me show you guys individually. And I actually, I wonder if I have... Okay, so I actually have some things. Uh, I, I have a wax sealing kit. Um, but this is, I think, way better. Okay, in the fact that it's got cuter shit in it. So we have a couple tea light candles. And I will show you what you do with that. And actually, would you like me to make a video of this? I can make a video. 
my recording stopped again. Okay, let me know in the comments below if you want me to make a video of doing a wax seal. I think I'm gonna do it anyways, even if you guys say you don't want it. <laughs> All right, so then we've got a um, little spoon guy to um, do your wax. And then they gave us three wax sticks. So we got a silver, we have a gold, and we've got a black one. And they got a little like fleur de -lis, um, symbol on them. And then last but not least, we have our wax seal. Oh, yay! It is a uh, triple moon. How nice. So this, these, um, come off so you can actually get more. Um, I have several uh, different wax seals. I need to start using them. Like I always forget to use them. Anyways, um, we did use my kit supplies whenever we made my, um, my son's and his fiance's wedding invitations. So I made them in Photoshop. Like I created the whole invitation, but like when we sealed it in the envelope, we actually did a wax seal. I think it was a heart or something that we had a thing. So anyways, I have some supplies and <laughs> it's kind of a mess because we used it. So I have this little guy here, right? So basically you put your, oh shit, you put your tea light there and then this goes over it. So you light your tea light and then you will have your little guy sitting here with your wax in it so it'll melt it up and then you pour and then obviously you um, push down on the wax with your seal to make your seal so I will probably make a video of that um, today or tomorrow but yeah I've got several wax seals I've got a um, tree and so these are just my personal thingamabobbers and then I've got a spell bottle and then, of course, and I need to start using it more, I actually have my Luna Moth logo that I had created. So, yes, I need to use my shiz, right? And then I have, like, these baby um, wax pellet things. So, anyways, I will do a video later. I can't wait to get my camera set up so I can do some face out videos. It's going to be right. Okay. I will do it. But, oh, my God, this box... Like, how cool is this shit? You got it all in one spot. Oh my gosh, I love. Okay, sealing wax kit in wooden box. This wax seal kit was designed so that you can keep this magical tool stored safely forever. Inside the box is two tea light candles, a wax melting spoon, black wax for your sealing for protection spells, gold wax for prosperity, silver can be used for a wide variety of other spells that you wish to curate. A wax stamp of the triple moon goddess symbol for sealing your magical workings by the power of three. And then it gives you instructions how to do it. So that, y'all, is our sacred space crate for June 2022. I'm so excited. Of course, my favorite thing is the wax sealing kit. Um, I'm also excited to have a rough piece of the black opal and um, everything smells great. And of course, a cute little jar that I'm going to figure out what to do with. And I have ideas. Okay. So guys, I would love if you would give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below what you think of this box. It really helps out my channel. And if you're not a current subscriber, I would love if you guys would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And again, when I reach a thousand subscribers, guys, I will be doing a big giveaway. You may receive something that you see here in this box, um, along with a bunch of other things. And I'm sure that I'll add some crystals and stuff from my shop or whatever. I will be adding stuff. So, um, <laughs> if you are a subscriber, thank you guys. I appreciate all y'all who tune in to me every single time and comment on my, um, my videos. You guys are such a blessing. Um, anyways, super excited. So again, I'm going to peace out. I got things to do. I may be back here later tonight, or you're going to see me tomorrow and I'm going to finish up my next tarot video and start uh, I'm doing tarot and, and numerology. I'm going to get that done tonight, guys. I promise you. It will either be posted later tonight or tomorrow. And then I'm going to start working on diving into each card individually. It's going to happen. <laughs> okay, guys. Until next time, have a great day. Bye.